of all of the kind of um, CGI stuff or effects or things, what was the one that was the toughest to nail? Well, this is really a question for Jack, because Jack is the toughest VFX in the pilot, and I think in the whole season. Um, we can't really spoil it, but he had to sort of create a template for a CGI moment. Yeah, it's, um, uh, I think I came to it with a lot of questions, and the greatest thing was working with people who I throw out an idea and everyone was like, let's try it. So that's kind of fun because it wasn't necessarily working with green screens or tennis balls and stuff. There was a real moment of, okay, well, this is a show about power, about magic, about witches. Um, and Lasher being who he is, what can we do in camera? What can we do without having to sort of break the fourth wall and actually really put it into the CGI world? But like, what can we do to sort of really explore these characters and what they can do um, as a sort of a unique ability and the greatest, it really was amazing like how open everybody was to the ideas because the best thing about doing a show like this is when you're around people who you really love and respect and everybody understands that it's a team and it's the collaboration that really brings it and elevates it and there was never an idea that was shot down. There was never, ever a moment where someone didn't say, oh, okay, great, let's talk about that. It's such a rare thing on a show or on a movie where you are able to sort of be part of the creation of your character, which I think is really important, especially on something like this. So, um, you know, it was very important to see like, the, the effects for these characters, but it was trying to sort of keep them yeah. human in a way. And, and in a, the case of, you know, your character too, is like you helped figure out a grammar visually with the camera, within scenes, you know, so that we didn't have to CGI, that we, as you say, could do stuff in, in, on the day in camera. It really worked, but it was a grammar generated a lot by conversation with you about how the character would move and so on. Figuring out a character together is the best, and um, and you're doing cool things. Like we're like, let's go back to the old school way of making movies, when you know someone's walking backwards and they're blowing out the candles, and that's how it looks like they're walking forward. And the candles are being lit. It's like, what cool things can you do without having to go too heavy? And obviously, there are some amazing set pieces that we go very deep into that stuff. But it's just as fun trying to do things in the reality of the situation, so you're not having to pull yourself out too much. All right, let's go to this Thanks side. So hey, so I'm Madison, two ends and one Y, but it's <laughs> so, so everybody up here on stage, it's a big tandem of mine to know, like, where you thought that you were most quintessentially finding Anne Rice's thematic life and bringing it to stage because like, I'm just saying, <laughs> she's amazing and if you do not know it, you should read. Y'all should read it all. Like, she's amazing. So where do you find that you all got tapped into her greater genius? I think right now. Her genius. Just good, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. He knows it. He knows it. Thank you. Will there be a She-Hulk crossover? Awesome. Awesome. Anne Rice was a genius. She was, and I, I, I don't know that I could ever tap into her level of genius. No, you can. <laughs> no, I, mean, I, I like the encouragement. <laughs> was there a particular description of Rowan in the book that you loved? Oh, that's a good question. I don't have a great answer for that. Um, yes. I mean, I, I, I loved, like I said, this, because a lot of, the, there's descriptions of her, there's this, it's also, the way she interacts with other people is incredible. Yeah. And I think, I read a lot of Anne Rice interviews, because I, 
I like your question because yeah. Anne, I wanted to understand where Anne Rice was coming up with all these themes and all these ideas and this woman and how she relates to men and her strength and her, is she evil, is she good, all of this. And, um, Anne was a really, she was had a, an interesting relationship with religion. She lost a child very young. She, if you read her interviews, she has fascinating things to say about writing, about her process, about living, about her her relationship with all kinds of different um, everything you think about in the world. And she took vampires and witches and these uh, really interesting stories and. She used them as a metaphor for what it is to be human. So I, I, I think learning about Anne really helped uh, form the character. Hi, um, my name is Jamie from Queens. I, uh, <laughs> I am a huge uh, main friend with just fan and Anne Rice fan, and I love um, the uh, adaptation and the updates for Interview with a Vampire and including race and actually including sexuality, which she doesn't really do in the books. Um, as somebody who was yeah. a teenager, which is which as a teenager when I probably shouldn't have been, um, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Um, last year was kind of a sexual awakening, maybe, for <laughs> updates or dealing with, you know, now in a post me to world, some of Lasher's behaviors would, you know, not fly on television and also um, dealing with race, changing, combining a character and then making him a black man, how did that affect the story also? God, that's the first question. <laughs> um, yeah, I think we're very aware of um, who Lasher was <laughs> in the books and some of the so-called descriptions. Um, we, yeah, you, you do have to be careful. <coughs> but, um, uh, God, that's really, I, 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 I think we've done it justice, but uh, we haven't pushed the Sexy. boat. In, yeah, we've, made, we've tried to make it erotic and sort of beautiful and interesting and actually the relationship on a much more fundamentally deeper level. So how maybe it was, um, a little more, I don't want to say pornographic, but it was pretty out there. Um, some of the stuff was pretty out there. Anne Rice had a vivid, uh, <laughs> in, a very, in a very, like I'm saying, there, there's, there was a lot of beauty in the relationship and what we've, what we've sort of discovered and, and the, the dark and the light. So I, I think you can't, within something like this, you have to, explore both sides of that um, without being exploitative. Yeah, I mean, it's a really tricky, tricky question because we want the book to feel of the now, uh, the, the show to feel of the now. We want to be telling faithful to Anne's story. And really, again, as Michelle said at the beginning, what was so compelling to us is that Rowan in, in the pilot says, you know, if I had power, things would be different for women. She says this to this young woman. So that's her kind of wish for the world and wish for what she would do with power. And then she starts to get power. And the question is, is that what she's going to do? How is she going to do it? And the vessel for her experiencing some of her power is this, this, this character, Lasher. And so it felt really important to sort of have Rowan consenting in some way to being empowered by Lasher, but also being frightened by Lasher, and so on. So I know in the writer's room, we just talked a lot about all of that. We tried to unpack what does it mean to be empowered? What does it mean to consent, to take on a power that's destructive? How do we make Lasher both scary, but not you know somebody who's doing some stuff we just simply didn't want to watch or have done to the character? So we, I guess I'll say, you know, you guys can see how you feel about when you watch it, but we really thought deeply about these things and asked all of these questions. And uh, the show is, is uh, our answer, at least in the first season, to one part of the question. We hope there's lots more answers to come, we hope. Thank you. Oh, right. Uh, <laughs> I, so, obviously, 
obviously I listened to the book and you find that there's certain themes within uh, Witch and Hour that are not compatible with today's work, right? Um, and I feel like combining uh, these characters and obviously it's an enormous, you know, there's a, there's a, the likelihood. And I think, you know, if you read the books that, you know, there was a gentleman in the books that was married to a matron woman. So you find that I think over the course of the years, you, uh, the Mayfair does have a very diverse look, you know, um, and I think just paying ode to modern day uh, television and all the conversations that are happening, it just feels natural that you will get, you know, an individual such as Cyprian in the town of Masca, you know, um, based off of the world that um, Anne Rice wrote. And, and that the story that Anne told is of a family that came through Haiti, so we really felt to bring the diversity of that experience of the world of New Orleans into the family and make this family diverse was, you know, again, much more of, of the now and did honor all of the ways in which Anne writes about, you know, multitudes of humanity, of all kinds of people. Are you already plotting out season two? Because we need a lot. Please say yes. <laughs> oh. 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 All right. It's gonna be. You, you, you'll tell us. Well, come um, January, I'm sure you all will tell Mark and everyone else. I want to thank all of you so much for coming.